You all with me? Here we go. All right. Dan and I were looking at each other, and Dan says, you going to do that first song? <laughs> I said, well, I guess so. Uh, are you glad to be here today? Amen. Well, I'm glad to see you again today. Man, it's, you know, hard to believe this is August the 9th, and it seems like we just say August, and all of a sudden, here we are in the middle, and uh, so it's moving right along. Good to see you today. Let's stand together, if you would, please. I want you to sing this little chorus and uh, worship with me. All right, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. We'll rejoice. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Wait a minute. Let me check this out here. Are you glad? Amen. Well, I don't know. Some of you, I'm not sure. Let's sing this with the thought behind it. God is so good, isn't he? I mean, lift it up. We're going to do one more at the beginning. Then we're going to change keys and uh, get a little brighter. And so let's sing it together. All right, here we go. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord had made I will rejoice for he has made me glad sing us now he has made me glad he has made me glad I will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad he has made me glad I will Welcome to you. Glad to see you today. Brother Dan, come and lead us, if you would, on our next hymnal. If uh, you would, just continue that singing. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, church. Let's just take a few minutes here and go to the Lord in prayer before we uh, sing this second song. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, it is a privilege and benefit, Lord, that we can be here this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the health that you uh, give us. Lord, I just pray for our... Uh, people, Lord, our church, as we continue to go forward here, that you continue, Lord, to give us the desire to be here, Lord, uh, for pastor as he uh, still tries to plan, and uh, so many things that we uh, haven't been doing, but I know, Lord, that uh, we're trying to get things uh, in motion, but again, Lord, trying to keep everyone safe at the same time, so I know it's uh, very difficult for uh, Pastor Glenn, and Lord, we uh, try to back him up and to support him as best that we can, so just guide him, Lord. Guide our hearts. You know what we want to be doing. You know how we want to be meeting and gathering. So uh, just continue, Lord, to keep us uplift, uplifted and stay in contact with each other. Lord, this morning, if it would be one here that's not uh, saved or maybe if someone that's just out of touch that may be saved but has gotten away, I just pray, Lord, they would uh, find a uh, uh, desire to be closer to you today. So guide us, Lord, here to this morning. Bless us with the music, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise him. Praise him. Let's do verses 1 and 2 this morning. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. 
small announcement here. Sorry about that. You're all familiar with the uh, Acme Community Cash Cashback. We do that every year. So that has started again on August 1st, and it will run to December 26th. So uh, what we usually do is ask you to turn your receipts in. There will be something in the back, or I'm sorry, on the front of the church at the uh, welcome desk next week. Won't have any lid on it, but just something you can drop your receipts in there, and it should be pretty safe. But last year, probably the best year that... Uh, we had as a church that you had, we got back $956.98 from that. So thank you for uh, just bringing in your receipts and putting them in a box. Amen. And obviously, thank you for shopping at me. So, all right, thank you. <laughs> heaven. Uh, what a joy that's going to be. Well, I want to just remind you of a few things, if I might. Uh, out in the uh, lobby, of course, is our uh, boxes for the offering. Uh, go by, if you would, if you have not, and uh, your tithes and offerings to go in there. And we thank you for all that you're doing and your giving. I don't know how many of you noticed all the material that's sitting out in the back parking lot. 
Uh, we're anticipating them coming uh, tomorrow and hopefully getting started. I know there's uh, some weather pending, uh, perhaps some rain and so forth. So just pray that uh, they have some good days so they can get on that and uh, get started with it. And uh, what a joy that's going to be to have that uh, taken care of and uh, underway. And again, just thank you for what you have done and uh, your giving and sharing. All right. If I could uh, this morning, if you're a teacher in our church, uh, teaching in our Sunday school, uh, if you could meet me just a few moments after the services, uh, we'll just meet over here by the piano side of the church. That would be great. Uh, I just want to share some thoughts with you. And uh, again, if you uh, are a teacher, or you've worked in our Sunday school department, uh, meet me over here just for a few moments afterwards, and uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit and uh, share uh, a few thoughts. I want to mention also that on the uh, end of the month here, the last Sunday of the month, uh, in uh, the August uh, month, we're going to serve communion in our church, and I know many people have asked me about that, and um, so we have uh, purchased uh, individual cups that already have everything inside of the cup, uh, the wafer, the, the juice. Uh, they'll be out in the lobby for you just to pick them up on the way in, and uh, you'll just hold them, and then when time comes, we'll share in communion. Uh, we will not be able to uh, pass the offering, or excuse me, the communion uh, cups and stuff like we normally do, and so we'll uh, um, do it the way that we can, but I think we still need to do it in remembrance of the Lord, and so we don't want to skip that. We want to keep that going and make sure that uh, we're honoring that uh, particular element in our church as well. And so we'll do that at the end of the month, so do uh, be mindful of that. One other thing, very quickly, we did have the uh, uh, Melissa and Jim Brady uh, concert scheduled, which was for the, uh, this afternoon, and obviously that will not be happening either uh, at this point. Uh, we're sad that we uh, haven't been able to have any of our concert dates. We had a lot of great concerts lined up. But, uh, you know, we're uh, dealing with and uh, going through just like everybody else. And so you pray for these groups because it's really a challenge for them and a tough situation. Uh, their income and their livelihood, obviously, is to be on the road. And uh, many of them are missing that element as well as uh, the uh, finances. And so you pray for them as they're uh, going through that. Well, our ladies, uh, we miss them uh, so much playing during our offerings and uh, we, uh, by times, I've just asked them if they would uh, do a piece of music for us. I, I appreciate so much our, our ladies and Brother Gary and, uh, you know, just uh, the way that they um, help our services so much and uh, just to give us a blessing. And uh, so I've asked them to uh, play a song for us today. I'm not sure both of you playing. Yes? Okay. Do it. Do wedding, I guess. So anyhow, um, I appreciate our ladies. They're going to play for us at this time. And you know, you can still worship and uh, honor the Lord when you hear the words of these songs. And so ladies, if you would, please.
sing without the instrument. Stand with me, church. He touched me. Dan, I'm on the pulpit. There we go. Um, I want to make a few prayer requests before uh, Brother Earl comes and sings. Charlene Lyle, she had uh, knee surgery done. She is home and uh, doing good, so you continue to pray for that if you would. Uh, Winona Ward, um, she fell and broke her leg, and uh, she is still in the hospital recovering, and so you pray for her need there if you would. Marsha Bissell, who uh, again fell uh, a few weeks back on the ladder, or off of a ladder, I should say, and uh, she did have a concussion, and so she's resting at home and uh, just ask you continue to pray for that uh, particular need if you would. And then uh, mom, she is uh, in the hospital, uh, and uh, she's having some troubles with her legs right now with some pain. They're talking uh, uh, maybe cellulitis or something like that uh, and uh, trying to get that under control. And so she's uh, there in the hospital. So you pray uh, for that uh, particular situation, if you would. And then um, we have a young lady uh, that's in our RU group. Her name is Bethany. And uh, she is having some medical problems as well. We want to lift her up in prayer. And uh, also another young man that was in my youth group years ago. And uh, stay in contact, contact with him by times. But uh, his name is George Ross. And he has a son that uh, is uh, on, uh, again, a ventilator in the hospital. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but he called and asked, we pray for his oldest son? And so if you would uh, remember George Ross's son. And then Brooke Samosco, if you would pray for Brooke. Uh, of course, that's uh, Peggy Ron's uh, granddaughter. Uh, about, what, two years ago she had cancer and uh, it uh, looks like there's a spot that's back now, and so uh, we're asking prayer for her once again. And then our nation, our youth, and uh, again, our school and our school teachers, man, just pray for these uh, folks and uh, for churches uh, as well and missionaries uh, that are on the field, uh, very challenging to a lot of that. And so you pray for these uh, individuals and just pray that God touch uh, all of those who are in need. Father, thank you for uh, bringing us together today. We ask your blessings upon these requests that have been now brought to our hearts and our minds. Thank you for your hand of healing and your touch. 
Lord, as you're working in the midst of some already, uh, there's others, God, who are still facing uh, challenges. I know that in a room this uh, size of a crowd, God, we all have needs that we're dealing with and asking God you to, uh, again, be with us, direct our path. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you will do. Lord, we pray for our nation. We just continue to ask that uh, there would be a, a time where we could uh, find a uh, viral, again, antidote to this uh, corona. Uh, God, that we could uh, return back in uh, many different ways and facets of life. We pray for our students, Lord, and our teachers, God, as they get ready to enter into schools here very soon. Lord, they uh, need direction, your focus. Uh, Lord, I pray for our youth as well. I know the challenges are great. And God, just for our missionaries and churches, Lord, we just continue to hold them up. And uh, Lord, may your will be done. Use us, Lord, as you desire. We still long to help people and to lead people to Christ. And so I pray for those needs. Now bless the sermon as we preach in a few moments. And uh, we thank you for what you'll teach us and say to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Earl, come and sing for us.
Well, thank you, Brother Earl. Appreciate that uh, song as well. Find, if you would, Hebrews in the Word of God, chapter number 12, if you have not already. Chapter number 12 in the book of Hebrews. We've been on a journey for about uh, three weeks. This will be our fourth week. I started with the sermon, Keeping Your Dream Alive. And again, keeping our hearts and our minds stayed upon the things of Christ. Believing in yourself was the second, and then setting your sights and uh, having a vision and a goal. Remember last week, as we finished that up, uh, where there is no vision, people perish. Well, this morning, I want to take you to the last of those as I uh, finish this up in this particular series of messages. One of the things that we have to uh, think about is where we're going when we leave this world and uh, what's going to happen when we uh, certainly uh, take our uh, heavenly flight. If you're saved today and know Christ as a personal Savior, uh, I trust that you do understand that. Uh, knowing Jesus as a personal Savior is, again, uh, the only way into eternal life in heaven. And so I hope and trust that that is a part of your uh, very being. But as we do that, we're working and going towards the promised land of glory. One of the most exciting things that happens in uh, the realm of what we would call sports um, is what we know the, is as the finish line. The finish line is perhaps one of the exciting moments in uh, time and in history, whether it's in motor sports, horse racing, uh, whether it's in track and field running, whatever may be the case, or whether it's even football or, or soccer, however you want to look at that as a goal. But there is a finish line that takes place. And one of the most exciting elements is when a runner is running or a, a event is happening and that finish line is coming up and literally what happens is the crowd begins to build in this excitement and this enthusiasm about the finish line. And sometimes it's a very close race and uh, the cheers go up and of course they're uh, longing for their runner or however may be the case in this uh, particular finish line. They're, they're cheering on for the very best to happen. I want you to know that there's a finish line. In the Christian walk, there's a finish line. And that finish line comes when you leave this world. Now, some may think the finish line stops when you get older. Amen. But it never stops. You may change what you do and you may change some of the things that you do, but the finish line is when Jesus calls you home. And so I want you to identify with this finish line. Many of God's children, they've run the race and they've finished well. Many of God's children have kept the faith and their hearts stayed upon the things of God. It's hard to believe, but come September, uh, this church will uh, be here for 53 years. And seeing that our dad started the church, we've been here for that whole duration of those 53 years. We have been around a lot of people. And we have seen and witnessed a lot of great and wonderful people, heroes of the faith. I, I stop to think sometimes of some of the people that I have had privilege of being a part of uh, over all these years and watch their lives. And they've done some amazing things for the cause of Christ, and they've been blessings, a blessing to us and to me personally. And, and many have run the race, and they have finished their course. And yet for some, there are those who run the race, and they stop short. And they stop short because in this journey of running, it becomes hard, and it's challenging. There's nothing easy about running. There's nothing easy about uh, endurance. It takes a lot of endurance to run. It takes a lot of endurance to finish. I could never be a long-distance runner. I've tried to do some of that, but it just didn't seem like it was one of my uh, favorite things to do. For one thing, I like breathing. <laughs> and when I run long distance, it seems like it's harder to breathe. And my heart begins to race a lot more. And I just feel like, you know, that's just not for me. 
several years ago as I was uh, doing a little more exercising than I am today, admittedly, uh, I started to uh, do some running and I thought, well, I'll try it outside. And man, I realized that my body just couldn't take the pave pavement and the pounding. It hurt. Amen. <laughs> and I just decided that ain't for me. And there are a lot of people that do, and there's a lot of people that enjoy that, but it wasn't for me. And so what I would find myself doing, if I am going to run a long distant race, uh, most of the time I'm going to, before I get to the end, find myself stopping. And I just feel like I can't endure. You know, a lot of Christians who've begun this walk or this Christian life and, and they've run the race well at times and, and God has again given them excitement and a zeal in their heart and a desire to do well. And then all of a sudden it seems like in the midst of that or in the center of that race, they find themselves backing off and sometimes even quitting. The devil makes things look a lot easier. He makes things look very simple. It's easy and it's not challenging and it's not hard. And so, hey, I'm going to choose this way instead of a life of serving God. And some lose sight of their finish line. They lose sight because they feel like they can't do it. And the truth of the matter is you can't. The only way you can run this race is in the power of God and through him and him alone. And so praise God, we still have people that are running. Amen. Praise God, there's people who are still in it and doing it and still running the race and still keeping the faith and keeping the charge and realizing that there is a finish line which God will one day take us over and get us through. And so our passage of scripture in Hebrews in chapter 12 says these words in verse one. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised and shame, and was set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so as we're running this race, see the finish line. Oh, it may be a distance off for some more than others. Some of you may be very close to the finish line and others may be just starting the race, just starting the run. But what we need to do is finish well, finish this race. And so our passage of scripture reminds us that there are some great heroes that have gone on before us. When you begin this verse, it says, wherefore, seeing also that we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Well, if you go back to chapter number 11, it's the book of faith. It is or chapter of faith. It is, again, the heroes of the faith who have taught us whom God left in the canon of scriptures to identify with how they did it and the way that they got across the finish line and accomplished what God had called them to do. Heroes of the faith. God says, see what do we have? This great cloud of company of witnesses, those who have done it, those who have given themselves. My lifetime, literally. I've had some great men and women of faith who have gone before me. I've had some pastors, teachers. And I've had some spiritual leaders. I've had some spiritual friends, had a dad and a mom showing us direction. Grandparents, today, heroes of the faith, those who had a heart for the Lord and those who have strived. And do you have today a hero of your faith? Now, I'm not taking a stand to say, put them up on a pedestal. That's not what I'm asking you to do. But those who have run the race and finished well, God says we are blessed to know them and understand them. And we need some heroes of the faith. 
We need some heroes that look at that finish line and said, I'm going to run and I'm going to keep running until the Lord calls me, until the Lord says, you're finished here upon this earth. Run the race. And so the passage of scripture, our writer here says, see that we have these great witnesses. It motivates you. It pushes you ahead. It gives you a heart and a desire to keep on doing what God has given us to do. So I want to ask you a question as we begin this thought this morning. Are you leaving a mark for those who will follow behind you? Are you leaving a mark for those in the Christian walk, in the Christian faith, for those who will come behind and someone will follow and say, you know what, that man was a great man or that woman was a great woman and they served God and they loved God and they kept the faith and they finished the course. It doesn't mean that the road would be easy or simple, but they did what God had called them to do because they saw the finish line. Are you leaving your mark? If you're a teacher today, if you're a preacher today, if you're a mom or a dad, if you're a grandma or grandpa, you could keep that list going, an aunt and uncle, a friend. Are you leaving your mark for those who follow behind? Well, Hebrews says we're surrounded by so great of witness For those who have walked through and those who have been faithful and those who have been strong, what a great witness that God has given to us and the opportunities that we ourselves can live in this day and age. And so here's the message today, folks. Run. Let us run. 2020, August. Who knew when we started 2020 what this year would bring I mean we started with this thought of a vision if you remember of having 2020 vision we started this year with this whole thought of focusing on God and and keeping our eyes fixed upon that which God wants us to do And, and we were moving along and everything looked well and then we got into the month of March and things just started spiraling out of control in our society who would have ever thought the churches in the United States of America would have been shut down? But we stopped our in-service, in-house service. service. Oh, we kept it going online as best we can. We're still continuing that and, and praise God for those who are hearing and those who are listening at a distance. But uh, we, we want to, you know, again, identify with the fact that we were on a Journey, and we started focusing, and people began to to get worried and, and nervous about what's going on. And and yet, I heard this repeatedly, and still here today. Hey, God is in control. God is here. God is in the center of this. We can trust God. We can believe in God. But yet, some folks have lost heart. Some are losing faith. Some are backing away and saying, well, you know, I don't see God in the midst of all this. If God was God, he could solve this and resolve it. Well, maybe what you need to do is ask God what he's doing during this time. What does God want America to focus on? And what is God wanting to draw our attention to? That may be the better question to ask. But the greater of that is that we keep running. It'd be simple to say, well, you know, let's just uh, hang it up and not worry about it. Let's just isolate. And, but that's not what God asked us to do. And so who knew in the year of 2020 that we ourselves would be pressed and pushed down and, and concerned about running the race? And yet God says, look, keep on keeping on until I come. Be the church. I always have to remind myself, look, church, we're here because God put us here for this very time. 
If this is God's timing, which it is, then God has placed us here for this very moment, for this very time. God has put all of us in that same position, and what we do with it matters. And so let us run the race. Run it as God has given. So look at our verse again. So there's a great cloud of witness, and God now challenges our hearts. As you run this race, there are certain ways to run it. There's ways to run this race through God's training, God's manual, God's word. You know, training is one of the greatest things that you could ever do. I mentioned a few moments ago about running those endurance races. There's no one in this room today, young or old, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you, know, you look back 50 years ago and, and think about it. You could never say, look, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to run 25 miles and get started. And most of you run a quarter of a mile and say, well, that's enough. The only way that you can run 25 miles is to daily prepare yourself, begin to move yourself forward. And day after day, moment after moment, experience what you need to experience in your life to cause you to finish that race or to compile in your body the needed measures to complete that particular distance. So training, coaching, we need the spiritual wisdom, we need the spiritual counseling, but we need to fix our eyes on the finish line. And the author and finisher of our faith is Jesus Christ. So watch this if you would. Here's some important elements. So we have this great cloud of witness and he says now, let us, and so now it becomes personal to us, it becomes us as God's children. So let us, listen now, lay aside every weight and sin that doth so easily beset us. So if you're going to run the race, you got to get rid of some things. You got to prepare yourself. One of the things about track and field, and when you run track, you find the lightest shoes that you could particularly buy. Pick some of those track shoes up and they're so light you hardly even know that they're on your feet and you get down to a point where you put on the lightest type of garment that you could possibly put on because you don't want anything to weigh you down you want to have the fastest ability and the lightest clothing that you could possibly have in order to endure and run God says here for a Christian look we are to lay aside the weight some of you are burdened down to the point where you're not efficiently doing what God has asked you to do. Some of you are weighted down and Satan has gotten into your thinking and your mind and you've been so oppressed and so down that you lose heart and you lose focus and you lose that desire and that drive and God says, look, what we need to do is lighten our load. Take it to the Lord. Let me finish the rest of it and leave it there. Oh, we take it to the Lord a lot of times, but we pick it back up and we try to carry it and we try to run with it and it weights us down, the burden of it and the struggles of it. And so God says, look, if you're going to run this, get a side of yourself that you lighten your load and watch this as he goes on. And he says, take the burden to the Lord and leave it there, but also lighten your load from the sin and the sins that plague us and the troubles in which we face, sin that holds us back and pulls us down. God says, let's get rid of it. Some of you are struggling because you can't get rid of the things that are before you that weigh you down. Satan is good, folks, at burdening our hearts and troubling our hearts. We've got to come to the place that we need to deal with it. If you're going to run this race and your eyes are going to fix on the prize that is before us in the finish line, you have to clean up your heart, your mind, and your thinking and your desire for God. It has to become Christ-like. And so he says, let us run the race. Let us take the weights and the sin that easily brings us down and get rid of them. Secondly, run it with patience. How many of you have patience? Wow. <laughs> 
That's a hard word, isn't it? Man, if you had anything I deal with in life more than, more than anything else is patience. It's, it's a trying thing. You know, God says, if you have trouble with it, ask God for more patience. That's a dangerous place to go. Because when you do that, God's going to show you how to do it, and he's going to move you along, and sometimes that journey is not easy, but God is doing what he longs to do. And running this race is running with patience. Patience is God's timing, not yours. I mean, think about it. We're so often wanting to run ahead of God and do what we feel like we need to do instead of holding back and saying, God, what is your will and what's your desire, Lord, not mine, and run it with patience. God's timing is right. God's timing is always perfect, and running means patience and doing what God has asked us to do, running smoothly and consistently and not up and down and not in a charge and trying to do it in a quick race or a quick hurry or a flash, but consistently running as God gave or as God is giving start well and finish well or finish strong and so running the race let us lay aside let us run with patience let us finish what God has set before us. So here's what I do in finishing this message today. See the tape, see the finish line. Well, you know, one of the things that motivated me in running was the finish line. To see that tape and, and know that that was where I needed to be. You get down in those blocks and you hear the gun go off and man, you charge out of there and you run with all you can give it and you see that tape and that finish line and you hear the noise from the people who are cheering you on and you look at that finish line and your heart's desire is to get there as quick as you can. And when you get there, oh, it's a great feeling. It's a wonderful blessing. When you hit that tape and you finish the race and you know that you have run it to the best of your ability and the strengths which you have had in your life to finish the course. Run to finish the, line, finish the race. Keep your eyes on the prize. Here's what verse number two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You know what Jesus was doing on the cross? He was looking at the finish line. Father, it is finished. <laughs> he was looking at the finish line. And the finish line was the great transformation of sin to grace. Oh, the Lord had his eyes on the finish line. And now the author here says, looking unto Jesus. That's our finish line, folks. Keep your eyes upon him. Keep your eyes fixed upon him. Don't turn back. Don't lose heart. Could be nearer than we think. Could be closer than we ever dreamed. But finish the race. Back in 1992, the Olympics, the Summer Olympics, was a young man by the name of Derek Redmond. Some of you will not recognize his name, but maybe you'll understand it as I talk about it because everybody who was watching the Olympics or saw the news saw Derek Redmond. Derek Redmond was running the 400 meter race as a sprint. And he was doing well in his preliminaries getting up to the Olympics. He had won some medals and had anticipated his day at the Olympics as being one of those days that he could have run the race and won a medal. And Derek got down in the blocks and the gun sounded. And with great enthusiasm to win, he started the race running. And the announcer, as given recognition, gave all the 
details of the runners and those who were in certain places and Derek was running a great race and he had every uh, expectation of finishing well. And he came around the curve, the turn that was heading towards the finish line. And his hamstring ripped loose in his leg. And immediately he dropped to the ground. He was in agony and pain great suffering and there for a brief moment he paused and then all of a sudden he got up onto the track and he was in his lane and in that lane he began by hopping on one leg doing everything he could do in his power to finish the race He was determined that even though he couldn't compete as the top-notch runner, he still wanted to finish that which he started. He began to hop, and and as he began to hop, the crowd noticed him, and and the crowd began to roar, and and people began to just applaud him, and the roaring of the crowd just kept growing and growing in anticipation of him finishing the race. He got within a few paces of the finish line. Some of you may recognize this or realize, but his dad who was sitting up in the crowd watched him in suffering and anguish and and no one is supposed to come onto the track and it's illegal to to come onto the track and, and literally it disqualifies, but yet seeing his son in such agony and such pain, he bursted out onto the track and, and some security guards tried to stop him and he pushed them aside and he got along, alongside of his son. He wrapped his arms around him and he helped him to the finish line. And he finished the race. Satan wants you to stop running. Quit. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people around here that want you to finish the race. Satan says, look, you can't. But oh, there's a whole company of people that says you can And you may find yourself injured. You might find yourself in pain or sufferings or sometimes breaking down, but the crowd is cheering on. The heavenly cry is saying, carry on, keep going, keep pressing forward. In those times that you think you can't, aren't you glad? that the Lord sends down some help to carry us through. He picks us up and he leads us. He lifts you up to where you can finish to the line which God has set before you. Derek's father said these words as he exited that day. I'm the proudest father alive Oh, church, if you could think about heaven today, we have a heavenly Father who's seated on the throne and Jesus at the right hand of the throne of God. And every child of God, he says, I'm proud of today. And every child of God, he longs for you to keep on running the race that is set before you. Every one of us in this room has a finish line. Only God knows what the end of that finish line is. Only God knows that particular moment which he calls us home. Some go earlier than others. I don't know why, but God does. My dad who preached here for nearly 30 years just 60 years of age. One of the things that always uh, kind of plagued our thoughts about that, um, I know he had a lot of heart problems and a lot of difficulties, but he loved singing the Lord's praises. If you knew my dad, he was uh, a great singer and 
he uh, sung by letter, opened up and let her fly. And he did that. But he was also a great preacher in my mind and my thoughts. My dad could preach and, uh, you know, he was back in the older days of preaching and he'd thump the pulpit and he'd get loud and had one lady that visited one time and she said, you know, I, I just don't know why he has to holler at us all the time. Well, he preached. And he loved people. Yeah, it's hard to be in the ministry and preaching if you don't love people. He loved people. And so sometimes you think, Lord, when he's doing such a great thing, why would you take him home? And I think by times I'm glad sometimes he's not here to go through what he maybe would endure. I told my mom the other day in the hospital, I said, I don't think dad would have done too good growing old gracefully. My dad wasn't a very patient man sometimes and I just, I don't know, it's hard to envision him growing older and, and dealing with all the things that, you know, sometimes you have to deal with. God chose to allow him to go home. I, I see a, a dear gentleman back here, Brother Kurt Hecker, in his uh, mid-late 90s. Preached a long time, Brother Kurt. Given his life to the Lord and served the Lord. I don't know why God allowed him to be here that long. I, you know, it'd be a blessing if we could all have that. Amen. But he's running his race. Dad ran his race. And you'll run your race. But will it count for the Lord? Run it. Get into it. Let God use you as you run. And may one day we finish the race. And God says, welcome home, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, to hear those words. I think one of the dilemmas that we have this day and age is that we really don't see the finish line. When one day we'll stand before the face of the almighty God. And life is, as we see it, a pleasurable time and fun and filled with fun. But we don't see the finish line. When the day we'll stand before the face of the Lord and the Lord's going to say, what have you done for me? Well, Lord, I did this, this, and that. And he said, no, that's wood, hay, and stubble. It didn't mean anything. There are going to be a lot of things that ends up in my path and, and the Lord's going to perhaps say, why did you do it that way? Or why did you do what you did? Or why didn't you do? And there'll be some times that I'm going to stand there with regrets. But it's a desire that one day he says, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. The finish line. You have your eyes fixed upon it. Are you looking for the day? Run the race. Run it because we have so great a cloud of witness who has run before us. Be what God wants you to be and finish where God wants you to finish. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. The counsel of our hearts, God, we need it. Running the race is not easy. It's challenging. Oh God, so often we find ourselves wanting to drop out of the race. But God, running is what you desire for us to do. Running the race by lightening the load, God, and the, the things that we need to drop off. And God, those things which we need to look at to run with patience. God, there's some in this room who started the race and they're not running like they once ran. Some who may be listening to my voice over, again, the airways. God, that 
They're not running like they once ran. Oh God, may we fix our eyes back once again upon the finish line. That you do a work in our hearts right here. Mine first and those around me, Lord, that we keep our eyes fixed. And oh Lord, that we defeat Satan and his desires. So help us to run the race. Thank you for what you will do in encouraging our hearts. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? We're going.